What's up, y'all? Today it is this guy, which does have screws, by the way, so we can't take it apart to see what's going on. Not overly necessary since there's full view of the levers as well, but we have chosen this blank to make the key for, and uh, I just realized the customer's coming back in today. He only comes to town on Saturdays. So I gotta get this knocked out pretty quick before live, unfortunately. I was actually gonna do it on live, but he may show up at 10 o'clock. So we need to take it down just a little bit. And this is the only one of these blanks I have, so I can't burn it. But it's pretty close that way. It's wide enough, big enough. I don't know, it should bottom out okay, because that's not a very long post, but uh, yeah, let's just get started making a key for this uh, no name three lever. No name three lever lock. Could be made by anybody. So we know that it's pretty much perfect because it passes by and gets up into it. If it was too long, it would hard stop. And it just barely looks like clears it. So that's dead on as far as height of the blade. Now, since it's intersecting the levers, we need to figure out which ones are the ones Right now, they're all lifting up, looks like. Let's go ahead and move this into that position. And so, but looking down into it, the one that's lifting up the most 
looks to be. Hold on, let me look at it. Let me look at it out of camera before I say that. Let's see if that helps in any kind of angle. It looks like levers, um, if I'm counting from the front, one, two, three. Looks like two and three are gonna be the deepest. So that's where we need to start cutting. And as a matter of fact, while we do that, we're just gonna go ahead and hit that a few times to get a impression mark on it, which will show us where it is. However, we could turn it this way. Yep, just like that. Put it up against the levers, just like that. Hold a flashlight in my mouth so I can't really talk but hold it and I'll go to hook hook. Oh, wow. Like that. All right. Uh oh. just made it into a fine tip pen uh, and I would I would normally just be doing this but I'm showing y'all this for video's sake normally I would just freehand it so we're gonna go back in here right to there we're gonna mark the bolt I'm gonna I'm gonna come down to right here just so that I can see what I'm doing since I'm doing it I don't want to miss mark myself are we in camera view kind of like right there yep yep Yep, yep, okay. <laughs> this is so awkward, y'all. Okay, so we're going to first mark that, which is our bolt. So we don't want to mess with that at all. Mm. And the levers are usually a standard thickness. So you can often just uh, gauge it from there. So then what I'd do would be kind of... I not enough coffee yet this morning. My hand's not too steady. Check it. That looks about right. Uh, and then we cut between those lines. Unfortunately, the levers are just a bit wider than my cutting wheel, which is unfortunate because I'd like to be able to do it in one pass, which is why you'll see me going... Oh no, my pin cap doesn't stay on now. I knew there was gonna be a downside to that. Anyway, uh, yeah, we have we have the uh, two and three that we gotta cut down now, not one. So that would be uh, this one and this one. The two middle ones are too tall, so we're gonna switch back to the deep jaw to hold it better. And start cutting little by little. reading and earth screws up your whole day 
Okay, so, yep, it looks like it's not hitting it. I'm looking right there at one lever. Nope, looks good. Okay, now, two is good. I think we may have just hit two. Because it's uh, not any higher or lower than it was. Now three is sticking up a bit and one. So we need to get, get three first for sure. And then one. Three being closest to the head. Just a little nibble, 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 nibble away at it. Uh, if you're doing this with hand files, same thing. I'm just not using hand files. All right, three is three and one are both now equal heights. Look at that. One's actually raising up even more. So we're going to knock down both of those equally, which means even deeper for number three, which is gonna be close to number two's depth, looks like. Let's go ahead and ride my belt just in case. see it directly intersecting with the levers as it's turning there so again one three definitely let's go ahead and take down three before we take down one Yep, deeper on three still. Looks like three is going to be the deepest cut. Now you need to start watching number two as you're cutting three. If we were counting, we'd say that was a three. So one, two, three, just rough, you know. It could be one, two, three, four, five, six for all we know. But we'll just say three. Three depth. Three wafer. Three depth. Our tip is definitely clearing it, and we can see it is dropped right there. So, back to number one now, because it is sticking up the highest. This is kind of a common footprint. We're gonna make a little bit of two off there. Wide 
widen out that number two a little bit. Yep. Perfectly. Perfectly lined up that one up. Two may be a, just a hair bit too wide, but it was tight enough so that I think we're I think we're okay. And number one is now dropping and the bolt's starting to come out. So you don't want to force it from this point because you don't really want to press it up in there. So we're going to go ahead and take the number one down just a tiny bit. Uh, again, I should be transferring to files right now. So probably last time on the machine. check it should start coming out even further and then uh, as we finish it with hand files it'll be probably good to go probably good to go one's a little high two's starting to poke its little head up there honestly three as well so we could go a little bit deeper across the board because we have plenty of room up here depending on how tight these upper to lower is right from here so we have this much room up here, but it's still pressing those levers into the bolt on one and three. Which probably would clear up again with hand files. So we're just gonna we're just gonna keep on that. Uh, decided to pop up there it's like hey i'm not quite done yet <laughs> of course of course you came out of nowhere mr number two i can even see a dent in it right there just from that light pressure besides this after all makes this key look Clear that up with files. We need to fine tune the shoulder area anyway. So, thank you, machine. And bring us right over to the bench to finish this fell off with just my typical Harbor Freight files. People have asked me about these. There's the red pack of Harbor Freight, or they may change colors, but there's the no handle right and then there's the handle version which may or may not be gray they change colors every so often uh get both packs i mean they're they're like two dollars two dollars a pack and by the way rot's god yes i do file these back and forth Now I'm clearing up that mark where I put it, uh, where I cut down this part of the key to make it fit. Yeah, we've got a beautiful mark right there on too. Uh, and what I said, because different files, a lot, of, a lot of them you'll find with no teeth on the edge. It's very important to have files with teeth on the edge. That's why it's important to get both of those packs because they are slightly different files in there. 
it looks like all we need to do really here, since I cut it down most of the way on the machine, is just kind of round the corners a little bit. So that's what I'm doing. Got it angled slightly, about 45 degrees. Oh. All right, about 45 degrees, and kind of twist it back and forth like this to, to hit that area right on the edge, just to take the edge off. And as the customer uses the key, and dependent on how worn out the wafers are, I will point that out that a lot of times you'll find a chest of drawers with like four, all four drawers having the locks on them. And typically they will send you the one that is open or you will get to one that is open to work on. And sometimes that, that drawer, like out of a chest of drawers, people usually only lock one of them. So that one gets the most wear. So if the customer sent in the one with the most wear on the levers, this key may be a little tight in it. So just be aware of that. For those of you who are thinking about sending in locks, which we do take locks, send an email, picture of your lock to selockandkey at gmail.com and we will see if we can make a key for you. They do start at about 40 bucks a key, and then of course you pay the shipping. But they're solid brass keys. We keep a large selection, try to keep a large selection on hand, I'm getting really low at the moment. Thank you, shipping issues. But we will try our best to help. If you can't find a local resource, of course, please try to find a local resource who might do this. Ask your friends and such colleagues at work if they know of a locksmith company around your area that might happen to already do this, and then it'd be kind of a waste of time sending it. I'm going to chamfer this back edge just a bit. I saw kind of a little projection right there, so I kind of take, take that off. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. And there we go. Pretty guy. We always compliment these with a brass keyring. Looks like I'm getting kind of low. Which means we sold a lot of brass keys. Solid brass. Let's check it one time. Let's put it let's put this on here so I don't forget. Go ahead and check it. A little bit tight on the back side. Ooh, a little bit yellow. That brass brought out the yellow in the in the screen. A little bit tight on the back side. I'm gonna go ahead and take that down real quick. I'm trying to get y'all the best view possible here. Doesn't need to come down a lot so you don't interfere with that number one wafer, but it just needed to be taken down just a bit right in the middle. Wasn't quite as flat as it should have been. Still dragging a bit. I'm looking in. I see it dragging right there at the top. I know I didn't give y'all much of a choice to see that, but you can actually sometimes see it in the key itself. I'm going to take that top edge down. Do, do, do. Just a few swipes. And check it both ways. There we go. Perfect, perfect. And try it. Watch our levers. Perfect. Not perfect, not perfect to me. Drag, I see where it's dragging now. Already been oiled up too. It's dragging on this back edge right here. You actually see the mark where it's dragging. Not dragging like fire breathing dragon, but dragging, 
dragging. Let's clear this up this way too. Yeah, it's that little part poking out right there. A little bit of a divot in it, but that's hardly, nothing's, nothing's gonna come of that. Get the other side. We'll put a little divot on the other side to match. How about that? A backwards ward, that's what we'll call it. That's what we'll call it. Didn't divot it enough. <laughs> there we go, close enough. Okay, should work fine now. And we're still so yellow. So anyway, that's it. It'll it'll wear by natural progression and get smoother and smoother as the uh, brass kind of does what it needs to to fit in and uh, yeah levers are a little high but if this happens to be the least used and there is a worse use that means it'll fit perfectly because the levers levers will be a little bit more worn uh, in the lock and they'll actually be naturally dropped down even further than what this is so whether this is now if it is the worn version it may be a little tight in that case it's 909 a.m. Y'all heard that, right? Anyway, just by doing this, we'll uh, kind of smooth out the brass since it's a solid brass key. Anyway, thanks for watching, y'all. If you have any questions or comments on this or any other videos or need this service, just shoot us an email with the pictures of the lot, please, and we can give you a quote. Just be aware these fancier keys are a bit expensive. We do not sell key blanks, by the way. We have a hard enough time keeping them as is without selling key blanks. Uh, and also I just noticed if I push in, like I'm pushing in on the drawer of the key, it like, it's smooth, smooth. So anyway, thanks for watching y'all. Gotta go do Saturday morning live. Ah, uh -huh. forgot one thing. I didn't do a lubrication with this. Some people have asked about that. I could take this apart and show you, but literally there's no reason for me to. Uh, there is an unknown lubricant. I did not put that grease in there or that oil. So not knowing what it is, maybe it doesn't have a WD-40 smell and it may in fact just be older oil. But what I'm gonna do here is hose it out with Houdini to let that dry and then come back in with our turbine oil. thing not really necessary to use a uh, contact cleaner but there's definitely a foreign lubricant in this guy that you don't want to leave there if you're not sure what it is so i'm gonna let this houdini do its thing for a minute because it does serve as a cleaner as well it just needs a little time to air dry so we'll be back in a second oil it up with turbine oil Check these screws too. Yeah, they're, they're okay, just making sure nobody messed with them. 